Good morning, good morning, good morning. Ha hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Welcome to Generations Church. Hallelujah. I want to welcome you online and you in the building. Hallelujah. How many of y'all are ready to give God the praise on today? Hallelujah. Because he deserves all glory, all honor, and all praise. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet and give him glory. Hallelujah. I came in the house today to give God glory for he is worthy. Hallelujah. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My, my, uh, Scripture come from Psalm 91, uh, verse 1 uh, through verse 8, 9, 7. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. It says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no enemy can withstand. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, with great confidence and on whom I rely. For he will save you from the trap of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you and completely protect you with his pinions. And under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a wall. You will not be afraid of the terror of night, nor of the arrows that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor of the destruction, sudden death, that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but danger will not come near you. Hallelujah! Glory to the Lamb of God! Ain't you glad danger will not come near you, but he is your shield and your refuge. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Jesus, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, glory to your name, Father God, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, I gotta thank you, Lord, thank you for being good, God, thank you for covering me, God, thank you for keeping me, God, thank you for keeping us, God, thank you for allowing us to see another day, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God, come in this building. Have your way. Arrest every spirit that is not like you. Send it back to the pits of hell from which it came. Glory to your name, Father God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, Lord, in this place. Move by your spirit. Hallelujah. Find us together in your love, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, God, our daily bread. And forgive us our debt, God. As we feel to give those who have trespassed against us. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Glory. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. How many of you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Let's give a praise on this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Stand on your feet on this morning. We're going to glorify his name today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Your 
gonna help me call on the name of Jesus this morning. Y'all gonna help me call on the name of Jesus this morning. We know at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Why do we gotta wait to eternity? We can praise him and worship him on today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Cause we love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain. That happens when we proclaim your great name. Your great name. Call your name, call your name. This something, this something we cannot explain. That happens when we proclaim. Power in the name. There is power in the name of Jesus. Power in your name. Sing, there is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name. Sing, there is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name. Strength when I call, when I call your name. So when I call your name, when I call your name, demons tremble at the name. When I call your name, demons tremble at the name. When I call your name, come alive when I call your name. When I call your name. So when I call your name, when I call your name, I love to call his name. Jesus, 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 Jesus,
Jesus, Jesus. When I call your name. So when I call your name. When I call your name. I don't call on food. When I call your name. I don't call on Muhammad. When I call your name. I don't even call my daddy. When I call your name. I call the name of Jesus. When I call your name. Just call the name of Jesus. When when you call his name, when I call your name. Things are breaking when you call his name. When I call your name. Say when I call your name. When I call your name. Oh, you lift up your voice today. Lift up your voice today and call on Jesus. If your faith is in Jesus, call his name. If your strength is in Jesus, call his name. If you need strength this morning, call the name of Jesus. When you need your faith built up, call on the name of Jesus. When you need your hope restored, call on the name of Jesus. Say, when I call your name, Jesus, 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 Jesus. When I call your name, I can see the demons running. When I call your name, I see everything is changing. When I call Jesus calling me when I call your name. Come on and put your hands together. Come on and give Jesus a praise in this house. Hallelujah. When I call your name. When I call your name. When I call your name. When I call your name.
any needs hallelujah if you need to come and bow down before the Lord and give whatever is ailing you whatever is troubling you on this morning hallelujah we have our intercessors that are coming up or has come up anything that is troubling you you can lay it down and you can give it to God right now he is here he is able to fix it he is able to do anything he is able to do everything Hallelujah. There is nothing that God can do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, God. All you have to do is trust him. Trust him to fix it. Trust him to do what he said he's going to do. And he will do it. Hallelujah. Because he is trustworthy. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, I ask you to move by your spirit in this place. Touch every mind. Touch every heart, God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is holy ground. Hallelujah. You can come and get it. You can get it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is here. He's able to do anything. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy, God. You are an awesome God. Hallelujah. There is none like you, Lord. There is none before you, God. There will be none after you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. thank you for your spirit in this place. God, we ask you to have your way. Continue, God, to worship. To continue to worship, God. Hallelujah. As we go um, to our uh, next step. God, if you, um, sorry, if you need um, this song. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, it's offering time in the house, Lord, y'all. Oh, I'm sorry. Announcements. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, grace and peace in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is Pastor B. Hey, listen, y'all. The Influencers Conference is almost here. That's right. Listen, I, I'm telling you, the early bird special is already over. It is April. It just seemed like a few weeks ago that I was just telling y'all about this vision. Listen, I don't want you to miss this. The early bird special is already over. Now the rate is $75 for those of you who want to attend the conference. Please understand that you can still register to be in person or you can register to be online. Those of you who register for virtual attendance, you will be receiving a link to every single class and it will be live to you in that moment. You'll be in real time. You'll be able to uh, attend the classes right then and right there. You get to experience it with us online and we will be paying attention to your questions and all of that but those of you who are going to be in person you already know you're going to be able to ask questions you're going to be able to sit and be in the midst of all of these great uh scholars and teachers and pastors that's coming from across uh the the state uh dallas texas uh we're going to have them coming from memphis tennessee they're coming from jackson tennessee they're coming from bentonville arkansas they're coming from little rock arkansas you don't want to miss these five amazing speakers that's going to pour into us june the 7th through the 8th 2024. You don't want to miss it. God's going to really ignite your faith. He's going to help you to become a better disciple and a better discipler because you're going to understand how important, glory to God, your life is and your walk with God is through his word in this conference. I'm telling you, we're going to do ministry on a whole other level after this is over. So go ahead, register today. Don't miss out. Don't sit back. Don't let the seats fill up. We're running out of chairs, so go ahead on and, and secure your spot today. $75 right now. Just scan that QR code and come on and join us for the Influencers Conference. We're here with our pastor, Mr. Brian Harris, leader of our Huddle Brothers all together today. And uh, first of all, we just want to thank you because without you, man, we would be these. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so be, be I, I want to thank you. <laughs> thank you, you, and thank you, God, for guiding us to you, man. Yes, sir. So thank you. Uh, uh, how do you feel about the huddle? Man, the huddle is uh, it's impressing me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you guys are impressing me. Uh, I love y'all transparency. I love your willingness to ask questions. I love your, uh, your communication. You guys are opening up. And I, I'll, I'll be transparent in this moment is that I have always been intimidated by leading men's ministry simply because I've never been in an effective men's <laughs> ministry. And so God gave me this vision, and through this vision, I'm able to facilitate. But because you guys are so awesome and so great, y'all make it easy because you're communicating. You even give me ideas and <laughs> things to talk about and questions to ask. I mean, you guys are great. Y'all are just opening up and sharing, and you're sharing your heart. And to me, that's big for men to talk, because as we study, hey. men are silent, yes. they're quiet, they 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 kind of internalize everything. So it's very difficult for men to open up, but you guys are blessing my soul. And so I'm thankful for y'all, man. Thank you for making it easy for me. And the biggest thing for me is thank you for showing up. <laughs> that's what is so beautiful to me, is you guys are actually showing up and then the engagement just the icing on top of the cake thank y'all for being thank great. you man yes sir <laughs> love you man. we're here with antonio again my man what's up antonio how'd you like the huddle today man? man it was good man it was good 
Nice. Uh, what was your, what, now we can't say too much. Don't let out too much. Right. But what was your favorite part about it? I can't say too much. Can't say too much. But um, it was about, basically, uh, for me, it's like getting ready to, to the manhood part of this. Like, from where I am now to where I'm going. You know what I'm saying? I like that. Like, yeah. we're going to be good of seeing where I am, you know what I'm saying? And have a bit of foundation, you know what I'm saying? To go to the next level. So, yeah. I'm, I'm excited about it, man. Me too, man. Yeah, Especially right. learning, uh, me, a younger guy, learning from you, an older person. Right. Not too old now. Right. He still got it. Got bad knees. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um, it was very insightful for me. Yeah. So I appreciate you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, for sure, man. Thank you. We're here with Brother Bill doing us a big favor here in the huddle. <laughs> hey, what's up? Uh, how y'all doing? Oh, how did you enjoy the huddle today? Man, you know what? It's one of those things that I appreciate coming. You know, it's like, um, this is the second one we done did. And, um, you know, I really feel like that. It, I'm learning a whole lot. Um, you know, listening to Pastor B and what everybody else having to say. You know, it's, it's teaching me I'm not alone on this journey of manhood. It's teaching me that I don't know nothing about being a man. <laughs> but it's good, you know, because there's nothing wrong with getting a better understanding of what you're supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we are men, right? Yeah. And, you know, and it is good to, like, you know, learn from other men. Like, I was looking at the room today, and we had somebody from every demographic, from teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're talking a 40-year age gap between that. And, I mean, you can just, it's so much knowledge. You know, as we get older, we forget what it's like to be young. <laughs> and then when you're young... You got to know what it's like to be older, you know, so it's good to have like that well-rounded understanding of a room full of men that you can be honest with, you can open up to, you know, you can confide to them and not have to worry about it going anywhere outside of that. I'm an open book, so that part don't matter, <laughs> but I know it's important to some people. So, um, but even watching the videos, you know, it's like watching my life, you know, trying to figure out what is it, what do I need to be doing so I can be a, a good husband, soon to be a good father to my boys, you know, to be a good brother, a son, you know, mm -hmm. just what it's like to be a man and not feel like that I'm not one because of what my, what my thought or what I think the identity of a man is supposed to look like. So I'm very grateful for the huddle, you know, and, um, I can't wait for the next one. Put some wings was hidden. Yeah. I don't know if y'all know that. Them wings today. <laughs> the wings was good, boy. Was that was good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God for the men's ministry in the huddle. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We on our way, y'all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Father God. Now it's time for our offering. Hallelujah. We have our junior deacons coming down the aisle to uh, give on in, in person. If you want to give online, you can give at uh, generations www.generationschurchonline.org or you can go through PayPal with Cash App Generations Church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all know. Thank you, Jesus. And now, y'all, if you want to stand on your feet, we can give our declarations on today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. One, two, three. Because I am a tither and a giver, the windows of heaven are open to me, and God rebukes the devourer for my sake. I am blessed financially and receive a blessing that I cannot contain. I do not worry about lack, knowing God supplies all my needs richly and abundantly. Therefore, I am able to sow freely and liberally, and I choose to sow cheerfully, generously, and bountifully, knowing I will reap bountifully. I have in abundance every favor and earthly blessing. All my needs are met, and I abound in every good work. Because I obey him, the Lord blesses everything I put my hand to. He grants me abundant prosperity. He makes me the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. The blessings of God are chasing me and overtaking me. Because God loves to see me prosper, I am believing him for jobs and better jobs, advancements, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, God ideas and strategies, debts paid off, expenses decreased, 
blessings and increases, financial freedom and breakthroughs. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Clap your hands if you stand up on your feet again. And let's clap our hands together. Lord, prepare me to be sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for, for you. Help me sing now to be sanctuary, pure and holy. Tried and true, and with thanksgiving, thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. sanctuary. Oh, for you, Lord, oh, Lord, can me be sanctuary, sanctuary. pure and holy, tried and true. Sanctuary, oh Lord, you Lord, oh Lord, prepare me, be a sanctuary, pure and holy, try to try and be thanksgiving, I'll be a sanctuary. to shake me up. I want you to fill me up. Then lift up your voice and sing. Shake me, hold me. You want me to be. Shake on me. But you want me to be. Shake on me. But you want me to be. Shake on me. Yeah. What you want me to be. And we'll say it. Yes, to your will. Yes, to your will. Say yes. Yes. Say yes to your way. Yes, to your way. Say yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, to your will. Say yes, to your will. Say yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, to your way. Yes, to your way. Say yes to your way. Yes, to your way. Yes, to your way. Yes, to your way. Say yes, I'll obey. Say yes to your way. Yes, oh, your way. Oh, oh, me. oh, me. What you want me to be? What you want me to do? Where you want me to go? Say where you want me to go? Where you want me to go? How you want me to go? What you want me to do? And you will say yes. yes. Say yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Get to your way. Get to your way. Say yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, to your will. Yes, yeah, to your will. Say yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Lord, prepare me, Lord, prepare to, be me. to be sanctuary. You will be holy. You will be holy. Tried and true.
to your will and yes to your way, God. Ah, Lord, I see yes. Lord, I see yes. Lord, I see yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on and give the Lord a praise this morning. Come on and give the Lord a praise this morning. How many love Jesus this morning? Come on, if you love Jesus, make some noise in this place. Come on, if you love Jesus. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Not just I, but we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. For David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Hey, I feel Jesus. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Then he invited everybody else into the situation. He says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. If you got breath in your body, if you got ability to clap your hands, you got ability to open your mouth, you ought to praise him because he's worthy. Oh, he's worthy. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. On my worst day, God is still faithful. On my worst day, God is still good. On my worst day, God is right there with me. Jehovah Shammah, he is in the situation with me. He's always faithful. He deserves a praise. <laughs> Woo! Feel all right in here this morning. <laughs> Woo! If you know the devil tried it, you ought to praise him because you got away. Hey! If you know the devil tried it, but it didn't work, you ought to shout because you got away. Woo! <laughs> Feel the Holy Ghost in here. Yes, yes, yes. Listen, I, I don't care, and I mean this with everything in me. I don't care what you're going through this morning. God deserves all the praise. Listen, I, I don't mean to say this to, to do pumping circumstances. I know it's one. We're going to sit down and talk in a minute. But I don't know if you understand what's going on in the world. I, I don't mean in your neighborhood. I'm not talking about on social media. I'm talking about for real in the world. I'm talking about end time biblical prophecy that's taking place while we in this church right now. If you don't believe that Jesus Christ is soon to come, something wrong with you. I'm just being real. If you think you got a chance to just say, oh, this is Sunday, I'm going to write this off my list, you might as well go on home. Because you do not know what time it is. Every time that we get to come together, we ought to give God everything we got. Because we're getting ready to go home. According to the word of God, we're getting ready to go home. I had a friend that texted me while I was asleep. He just left to go to Israel. And then last night, they started bombing Israel. He said, pray because th last night was a long night because they had to ev evacuate us and put us in a certain place. And he's there on missions. 
He's there doing the will of God. And they started bombing Israel. But I thank God if he had a chance to be here, and I'm sure he probably tearing Israel up, praising God right now, because he said, we safe and we all right, and we just got released to go back to our room. You run about a dollar or somebody don't like you. There's some people that's going through a whole lot more greater. I thank God for every chance we get to come together and give God glory. So with, with our every breath that we have, with the energy that God has blessed us with, we ought to be willing to lose everything we got to give God praise this morning. Now for one more time, let's give God the biggest shout of praise we can find. I feel like running in here this morning. Yeah, yeah. He's all right. The Baptist preacher said, ah! No, he's all right. I'm not trying to mess with y'all this morning, but I feel I got to get something out real quick. Ah! No, he's all right. I, I got most of the range in my neck this morning. I'm a little sleep depraved. Last night was the longest night I got sleep in 48 hours. But I don't feel no pain. You see what I'm talking about? I feel a little strain on my muscles, a little tightness in places, but no pain. Now, I don't know if that's the pills or God. Either way, I can praise God with no pain today. And I still declare my healing. <laughs> See, so some of us got just a little bit more reasons to praise God. And for those of you who, don't, who, who need a circumstance before you can give God praise, you ought to praise God because you avoided a problem. He can't, you ought to thank God for what he didn't let happen. <laughs> I mean, I'm just trying to help you. All right, we may be seated this morning. Amen. I got Dr. Kim with me this morning. Amen. Amen. The way we are worshiping God this morning, we are worshiping God this morning or teaching this morning based on a um, request from the people. I was preaching on Ephesians chapter 5 in our series, and uh, while I'm in the healing process, my wife was telling me the other day, said, you don't understand how hard preaching is on your body. So sometimes you're trying to recover and all of that. And so when we taught on Ephesians 5, I began to laugh at some of the couples in the building like y'all do. And so Shanika, she had... A chip on her shoulder. Leonard had a chip on his shoulder. A couple more people was, you know, tripping in the sanctuary. And they said, we want to say something. And so, <laughs> so I said, well, you know, I don't really know. I don't want to like a fight to break out <laughs> in the middle of service, you know. Uh, because we do come here to magnify God regardless of what y'all think. This is not WWE, I promise you. And so I, I, I didn't want the new couple to look bad on the stage. Amen. I didn't want the new man. <laughs> Even though they, they about to be married for a year, I didn't want church to be the reason why they divorced in front of everybody. Amen. <laughs> so so, so, so uh, I chose to leave them alone this time and uh, bring, bring my greatest opposer on the stage. It's more dangerous this way. Mic check. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
Be because when I preached this on Ephesians 5, she wanted y'all to bring her a mic. <laughs> because I felt like, she felt like it was a one-sided story. But if you know your pastor, your pastor is not afraid of a challenge. And so my thing is, I'm always, I want to be fair. And so some of you uh, sisters may feel like I was just being a little too tough on you. But I was just giving you what the word of God said and then what I see in the culture. And so some of the men may have thought I was too tough on them. I was just giving you what the word of God said and what I see in the culture. I don't know anybody other than me and Dr. Kim, the way we are set up. I believe that the way we minister, even in our home to each other, our communication on marriage and family and, and, and just about anything, we have sometimes two different viewpoints that make a whole point. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? We come from two different angles. I say something, but it's not the whole entirety in itself. Then Dr. Kim comes back and she says something, and it's not, it's, it, 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 it completes what I just said, or vice versa. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So today you're going to get a full version of Ephesians chapter 5 and, and the way we're going to bring it out to you. And I pray that you are blessed. Anybody being blessed by this series? Amen. I know last weekend we, we taught a little something on the, the end times and all of that. And I think that is very uh, important, uh, the attitudes of the end times, how people will be lovers of themselves. People will be more lovers of pleasure than of God. Uh, people will be lovers of money. Uh, just different things that we will be loved. We will, we will have a form of godliness, but we're denying the power thereof. And so there are just so many things that we want to take a look at. And because, it, again, uh, and we do, we want to pray for Israel. Amen? Amen? The Bible teaches us to pray for Israel. Amen? Uh, you know, uh, it's amazing how God's people are God's people, but somehow God's people are not perfect, but he owns them. Y'all missed that. God's people are God's people, but God's people are not perfect, but he owns them. <laughs> and, and Israel in itself has been disobedient and hard-hearted toward their own God for years, and God still say, they my people. And anybody who touches Israel, if you do good by Israel, you're blessed. If you do evil toward Israel, you are cursed. And, and so he teaches us to pray for Israel. Because can't nobody do nothing about Israel but God. Preach, Pastor B. Can't nobody do nothing about Israel, no matter how out of order they are, but God. You read in the Old Testament, especially in the prophetic books, God judged Israel, withdrew himself, and allowed judgment to fall on them. Some died, some stayed alive, but then when he got tired of Israel suffering, he let up, and he sent a new, 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 uh, new uh, prophet in the town, a couple of new prophets in the city to, to declare prosperity and to declare restoration. But we need to pray for them because, again, what we are seeing is, is wars and rumors of wars, all of these events, uh, uh, eschatological events, events that are taking place that's leading up to the coming of the Lord. This is why I'm trying to help our church. If I, I don't have the influence of the whole world, but I have the influence of our church, and I hope I have influence in your life, that you would trust my biblical accuracy as much as I can be accurate as I can as it relates to these days that you need to get in God I will say get in church, but church ain't going to mean nothing to you until you get in God. It ain't going to mean nothing to you. You ain't going to have no value in the church until you take value in Christ. Amen? And so, so you need to get in God and get rooted. Get rooted. You, this is not the time to be shaky. This is not the time to be tossed to and fro. This is not the time to be confused. This is not the time to be uh, walking in your feelings. Come on, somebody. Because there's a lot of stuff going on that's going to get you in your feelings. And if your feelings is the dictator of how you move, you're going to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. 
And we do not know the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall come. Now, I know many of us can't rejoice about that. And a lot of people, and, and I've, I've, been, I've been scared to say these things, not because I don't believe them, because we have a group of apostles, prophets, teachers, pastors, and evangelists that are talking about cars, houses, opportunities, but not talking about the coming of the Lord. This is not to threaten you as a believer. This is to warn you, get it together. The Lord is coming for you. Don't sit and just be a casual Christian. Be a hot Christian, preach pastor me. I said be a hot believer. Be a hot believer. Be a hot believer. Be a consistent believer. I don't care what people say. I don't believe in the rapture. That's going to be a dangerous thing if the rapture take place and you don't believe in it. Nobody cares about your personal perspective. If the Bible has said so much already and so much is already has taken place and the, almost the only thing that's left is for him to come through the sky, you might want to at least believe what the Bible says. At least. At least test the scripture. Come on, somebody. At least move in the direction of what the Bible is saying. Everybody got an interpretation. Everybody has commentary, but you need to ask God, you show me what's real in this Bible. Show me how to apply my life. At the end of the day, show me how to be ready at all times. Show me how to be ready. And I know that's hard for this generation because we making plans. We getting degrees. We trying to live, build a life where we can stay here. But everything you building is temporary and ain't going to burn. I know you ain't heard in a while, but I'm sobering you up these days. Everything you building is temporary and it's going to burn. Dr. Geneva got some of the baddest cars on earth. But one day, every one of them beautiful cars is going to burn. They're going to burn. They ain't going to be worth nothing. You want to know the truth? The moment you drive them off the lot, according to, you know, the automotive industry, they depreciate the moment you drive them off the lot. Come on. So everything that we have on earth ain't nothing to be boasted in. It is worthless. But the Bible teaches us what to do. Don't lay up treasures on this earth where moth and things can kill them and destroy them. But what does he say? He said, lay up treasures where? In heaven. We need to get to thinking eternity rather than this temporary place where we've been planted. Occupy ourselves till Jesus comes so we can give our all to God. Amen. So I want to warn you, it's time to get it together, y'all. I don't know if you feel that. I don't know if you feel the discomfort in the earth today. I do. I do feel it. And I don't know how to communicate it to you to convince you or to how allow you to convict. Oh, that's the Holy Ghost job. And you can harden your heart all you want to. That's not going to mean nothing when, when glory hit the sky. And the king, glory to God, is returning for his people. It's going to be too late to try to trust God then. There is nothing you're going to be able to say. There is nothing you're going to be able to do. It, God has given us, he's sounding an alarm now. He's whispering it right now. Before you hear it, he's whispering it to you. You need to change. You need to commit. You need to get it together. You need to stabilize. You need to be faithful. He's telling each individual right now, get it together. That, that thing that's pulling you, that ain't gas. That's the Holy Ghost. Come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Hallelujah. So, so he's, he's really helping us to, to get this right. I, I can't go along with people who don't believe that Jesus is coming back. I just can't. And it's not because I heard it all my life. It's just the things that I have read and understood in Scripture have already come to pass. If it's already come to pass, then why not believe the rest of it? <laughs> That's the way I see it. Now, if I'm wrong about it, at least you're still living a, a life of godliness. Amen. You ain't got to worry about nothing. 
But if, if, if I'm right about it, you get to be prepared when the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords come through the sky. Amen. I choose to be ready. Look at your name and say, I choose to be ready. Amen. All right. Well, God bless y'all today. Uh, it's a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Thank y'all. Uh, we working on this heat. Amen. Uh, I'm trying to anyway. Uh, We're going to get it together. Amen. Somebody thank the Lord for that, that word of prophecy. <laughs> Amen. Uh, uh, I think next week the wall will be coming down and we will get the bathroom back. Amen. And we'll start supposedly construction pretty soon on the other side. And once they sign the, the, the contract for the sign, we can get that in motion. That's in their hands right now, not ours. So y'all pray that that expedites so we can go and move on with that. Uh, amen. 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 And, um, and then uh, just keep praying for God to make provision as he is. Amen. I said as he is. Amen. Keep praying for God to make provision. And let's keep praying that God will continue to uh, bring in souls for the kingdom of God. Amen. It's not our job to build a church. It's God's job to build the church. It's our job to be witnesses. Tell people about Jesus. Amen. It's not your job to force them to come in. It's your job to, to witness to them and to pray for them. Amen. Well, y'all ready for the word this morning? Amen. I missed y'all last week. I came in. I said, man, did everybody stay asleep this morning? Oh, well, y'all worried me. I thought I had made y'all mad the Sunday before. Amen. I didn't know. I was just preaching the Bible. I promise. That's all I was doing. I try. <laughs> That's what I try to do. Amen. Y'all made me scared. I didn't know if Jesus had come and I missed him. I didn't know. It, was just that, it was just that empty last week. I was serious. I was like, Lord, have mercy. Where is everybody? And y'all know y'all pastor. I got ADHD and I worry. So, you know, I try to be hands on with y'all. I'm having to learn to let go a little bit. <laughs> not worry myself to death. But, yeah, when you miss, I don't hear from you. I don't want to know your business, but it does make me worry a little bit. But that's the heart of your pastor, you know. I love you for real, and I want to make sure you all right. Amen. Amen. I don't want you sitting at home, and you don't suffocate it, and we don't know. You know what I'm saying? It's hot. It's, it's getting hotter. Amen. I ain't know if y'all got sick last Sunday. For Easter, it was hot in here, and everybody said, I ain't going back. You know, I didn't know. All right, God bless y'all. Ephesians chapter 5, me and Dr. Kim are going to talk about our uh, theme subject, trusting God at home. And so today you're going to get a biblical worldview for the Christian family uh, from she and myself. And so one of the things I want to bring out, because I talked to other people who had listened to the broadcast and, um, and uh, just was blessed by it, and some were bringing up some really... Uh, critical and uh, necessary points that I want to bring out today. Number one, uh, God, God has established an order for the home. Y'all believe that? God established, now this is, this is the framework of the way God designed it. When God made Adam, he put him to sleep, pulled a rib out, and named her Eve. Made a woman named Eve, right? So he created a family. He told them to be fruitful and multiply and to replenish the earth, right? So out of Adam and Eve and out of, out of, out of, out of their children, uh, uh, Cain, Abel, and Seth, uh, they, 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 had, they, they, they was able to, to uh, replenish the earth and reproduce or pro procreate through, uh, through them all of mankind. Right, so so we 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 are children of God, but but we also children of Abraham. I mean, not Abraham, uh, uh, Adam and Eve. Amen. Uh, that's that's the that's the nature that we have uh, as sinful people. Uh, they was not sinful people at first, but we still wrestle with the decision they made in the go in the garden right now, right? Because of our father in the uh, Adam and Eve. Y'all forgive me. Um, so God's picture of a family is a, a husband, a wife, 
mother and dad, and, and children. Y'all agree with that? Now, we do know that every home does not look like that for a multiplicity of reasons. Even in Scripture, every family doesn't look like that. Right? So, so we get, we, we, well, we're, our, well, our task is, is to have to minister to an array of households who doesn't look like what God has fashioned the family to look like. We got to deal with your context in your home and teach you what that means for you. So, so in, our, in our family, there is a husband, there is a, a, a wife, there is a mother. I mean, I'm not no mother. There is a mother. <laughs> there is a mother, and there is a father, and then there is a kid, right? And, and so, so, but for, for, if I can use Christine home, in Christine home, it's her, her kids. There is no man there. Can I ask a question? And, and I, don't, I don't want to take a poll right now. How many families look like Christine in here? Raise your hand, Christine. That includes you. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight, eight, eight families with, with no husband but a woman with children. God bless y'all, first of all. God bless y'all, first of all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> And, and the brother right here. Amen. Amen. Because there are, we, we, we forget about this demographic, but there are a lot of men who are taking care of their children. Amen? Right. So, so, so we, we, we understand this. So how do we deal with all this? Now, let's deal with the, 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 the mother who lost their spouse. That, the only reason why she's single is because she lost her spouse. That's it. Other than that, I think they call him Poppy. Poppy, ain't that what you told me it was, Poppy? Poppy. When Poppy was alive, Geneva didn't have to worry about nothing. Poppy took care of everything, right? But, but, but Geneva probably had to relearn life after Poppy died. So her situation wasn't that a man abandoned her. A man went on to be, to, be with Jesus, right? So, 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 so that's a whole nother situation not just a single parent where the father said, I don't want to raise these kids and I don't want you no more. All right? So, so now, let's deal with, let's deal, and I'm just painting the picture. I'm laying all this out here. So when we start talking, it's going to be hard to address every single household like that. So what about the, the husband and wife that's there with the children, but the mother or the father is still absent, disconnected from the home? They there, they go home, they come home every day, but they never at home when they there. All right. Are they connected in that home? Do those children, my daughter can't stand me in camp. She can't. You know why? Because we always kissing, we always hugging, I'm always popping up, you know. She know, I mean, well, I'm, I'm just telling the truth. Why am I saying that? Because to my spiritual children today, I need you to understand my natural child understands affection is between me and my wife. I don't care about you trying to get to your mama. She my woman. I come before you, homegirl. I come before you, homegirl. You, you, you are her baby. We love you. You spoil. But when it comes to this right here, you, you, got, you got a little bit of time left. You better get it all in because when I call mama, you better find something to do. <laughs> Preach, Pastor B. Ain't nobody preaching me now. <laughs> you better find something else to do. I, it ain't got to be sex. Y'all, I know y'all thinking nasty. It ain't always got to be sex. It could be just want to go watch a movie. We can all be in the same room. We not I made it, but if look, you ain't gonna be up on her like that, cause she about to be up on me like that. Yeah, you too old to be on the breast. We done with that. It's on my breast now. I got y'all attention now, don't I? <laughs> I got all y'all attention. By the way, the men's huddle was off the train yesterday. 
Good Lord. Good Lord. Can we give God praise for the huddle? I can't tell y'all everything, but don't let these men fool y'all being quiet around y'all because these brothers be talking. We got released yesterday. I had to look up the Lord's heaven and say, Lord, are we, are we carnal today? I almost had to stop them. Okay, I got you, I got you, I got you. <laughs> we were going in, y'all. It was good, though. Y'all got to give it up for we getting some help. We ain't talking about y'all either. We talking about us. Love it. Anyway, anyway. Anyway, uh, I just kind of felt that spirit come back, Carlos. <laughs> I felt it come back. But, but, but when it comes to my marriage, even as a parent, my wife still come first. The Bible does not say that a, a, a father loves his child like Christ loved the church. The Bible says a, a husband loves his wife like Christ loved the church. So the number one priority that the husband have first is to treat his wife right. Who y'all ain't clapping hard enough. Number one priority is not to ignore her. Even if she's a nagger, he is equipped to deal with her nagging. Amen. Amen. Should we deal with it, Carlos? <laughs> I mean, because some of y'all naggers. Some of y'all just don't, you just don't know when to stop. And you just keep pushing and prying. And on the flip side of that. Here we go. <laughs> told y'all. There are some husbands. There are some. Who are naggers. There are some. You're right. Well. <laughs> There are some. There are some. I agree. Should we be equipped to handle the nagging of our husbands? Ooh. Are we? <laughs> Let me look in the word of God. I don't see no I scripture answer, on there. But I want to know what you think. Go, go on, talk. Go on. I told y'all this is going to be I good know today. What you think. Huh? I want to know what you think. I don't know. I mean, I mean, I don't know. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the way I see it, the way I see it, the, the, <laughs> the way I see it is that you may not be equipped emotionally, but as a praying woman, you should be equipped spiritually. Amen. Good answer. I'm going to tell, tell you why. I'm going to tell you why I say it this way. I had to think, because I think <laughs> Dr. Kim be hitting me. But this is the way we are at home, though. This is a, matter of fact, we were like this at the hotel earlier. I said something wrong. I said, I think this is what she said. No, you can't say that. <laughs> I was like, see, you ain't even let me finish, but you can't say that. And she didn't care about what I was trying to say next. She just took my conversation, and she ran out with it and told me what I'm going to tell y'all. <laughs> so the point of the matter is, yes, I think you should not be equipped emotionally because the Bible said you are the weaker vessel. There's not a lot of things that men should be putting on you that's not right. There's some things we should be strong enough where we are in control of our emotions, control of our, our, our temperament. We, you know, a man is supposed to represent strength to a woman. Uh, when, when Tony Evans, uh, he, he teaches this, uh, and, and when he talk about his family, he said for years, uh, as radical and wild as his kids were and, 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 and all of that, he always wanted to be a kind of kingdom man that his family could depend on him. So anytime they got the fussing and nobody could figure anything out and the house got crazy, he wouldn't even say anything. He would throw up three fingers and everybody be quiet. That's the kind of kingdom man that he was. They trusted him spiritually that he was going to... And, and guess what these three fingers meant? The three fingers meant to Lois... And to all four of their kids, I got this. So whenever they couldn't figure out anything and there was chaos in their house, he did not yell, he did not scream, he did not fuss, he didn't throw anything, he didn't throw a tantrum, he threw up three fingers and he said every time he did it, the whole house would shut up. And he said, here's the thing, 
He would throw the fingers up to get in control of the situation, taking full responsibility on himself to fix whatever was wrong. But he said just because he threw the fingers up, he didn't always know how it was going to get fixed. But he also knew who knew how to fix it. So every man should be subject to God and have an authority over their family to the point where when there is chaos breaking out in the house, he really shouldn't be the nagger. He should be the person that is in control. However, however, a lot of men can only learn that from another man. If your father, if my father was emotional, threw tantrums, acted a fool, yelled, hollered, screamed, cussed at everybody in the house, and I'm looking at that and I'm seeing that this is how he responded to my mom or to us as children, then I grow up learning how to holler at everybody. I grow up, yes, I grow up learning how to holler at everybody. And let's be honest, in the black family, we don't know how to talk when we get upset. Even the most introverted household, when things get out of hand, somebody starts screaming. Amen. I know y'all cute in church. I know. I know. Y'all going to sit with that one today. The most introverted household, somebody screams. Why? Because we have never learned how to handle chaos in the black home. Amen. We have never learned how to handle care. So when you're dealing with a man, like you married a man that is extremely emotional. I told you up front. I told her I gave her a long list of things and the reasons why she shouldn't have married me. <laughs> I did, didn't I? I told her. I, I spent about a couple of hours. And I said, this is this, this who I am. This is what I'm capable of. I said, now, after I got done, I told her. I said, here's the truth. You decide if you still want me. I'm a good man. I'm going to love you. I'm going to take care of you. I'm very romantic. I'm, I'm touchy-feely. I, 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 you know, you ain't going to miss nothing. But when I get emotional, I have my areas of escapism. I deal with this. I deal with that. And I told her. And I said, now you decide. Now, first of all, most of y'all ain't going to tell that level of truth trying to date somebody. But I did because I understood it don't matter if I tell you up front or not. If you marry me and you see this, this could be very disappointing to you. That's why a lot of people divorce because they don't tell the truth up front. Amen. That's why people divorce because they don't tell them I'm crazy now, right now. I ain't got good sense right now. I got the potential to throw a brick through the window in the middle of the night. We don't want to talk about bricks. But anyway. <laughs> um, not because I've ever thrown any or he's ever thrown any. I mean, I But she has collected them. It was for a purpose. And left them at the church. <laughs> it was for a purpose. <laughs> a godly purpose. But um, just to speak to what you just said... I think what, what happens a lot of times is because we confess what, who we are, even, even in the confession of who you are to the person that you are, are in relationship with, it doesn't make it less disappointing when That's they right, say that. That's right, yeah. That's true. Because the expectation is, yes, I know the potential, but I expect that because we're talking about Ephesians 5. Right. The ex expectation is that that self-sacrificial love that yes. Christ had toward the church, yes. that I'm not, I'm expecting you to find, because it says, you know, as Christ, you know, love submit, the church. you know, yeah, but wait a minute, I got you, you took me to a different direction. Submit, I got you. <laughs> yeah, as unto the Lord. So I'm expecting you, both of those are self-sacrificial. It's not a one-sided thing. And sometimes we read Ephesians 5 as 
though the subordination or the submission is one-sided. It's just the right. wife submitting to the husband, but right. it's also the husband submitting, to, submitting the to the wife. Absolutely. And if you keep reading, and if you also read in other areas of the Bible, you will see that submission is to one another. Right. But that self, self-sacrificing self love, because anything that the husband does toward the wife is not so that she will in turn do something for him. Yeah. Because Christ didn't expect us to do anything when he went to the cross. Right. Right. There was nothing that we could do to counter that sacrifice. Yes. And so in that self-sacrificing, Christ is the one that's supposed to lead you or me, if I'm the person that's saying these are issues. Because I have my own issues that that we, you know, that I brought to the table right. as well. Those are the things that we are supposed to to submit to him. Yes. That's why the whatever the husband is told to do, it is as Christ does. Whatever the wife is told to do, it is as unto the Lord. Yeah. Because I don't expect that you give me a list and then you carry all those things out. Wow. Yeah. Because now I told you, so you should just accept that and put up with that because I told you in advance. Absolutely not. Right. Those are the things, the areas where I as a wife am supposed to pray for you. Yeah. Because God told me that, that you were my husband. God mm-hmm. told you that I was your wife. I can't back out of what God said because there is potential there wow. for something that I don't like. Wow. When he told us to, to start this church, there was a lot of potential a there lot of potential. for things that, that we don't like. Yeah. We've seen a lot of that yeah. potential realized. realized. Yeah. But we couldn't back out on it right. just because of the potential. So it wasn't, well... You can run now. If God said it, that you were my husband, I can't run now, even if I want to run. It's been 20 years. Because <laughs> that potential, that, that those things that you know about yourself, because sometimes we know things about ourselves, but we stop at the point of knowing. Mm-hmm. I know me. Okay, good. What are you going to do about you now wow. that you know you? Wow. Because in the preparation to be a husband or the preparation to be a wife, those are the things you should be looking at and submitting to the Lord yeah. before you get to the space where somebody else is supposed to submit yeah. to you as you are submitting to the Lord. Yeah. Wow. That was good, right? And that's true because, again, you, 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 you grow up in church and all you hear is the, the wife submit to the husband. But, but remember, the, the family is a picture of the church. It's the, it's the same it's the same principle with me saying, y'all just submit to me because I'm the authority in the church. No, I'm supposed to submit to you too. That's accountability. Yeah. That's accountability, and it's honor going both ways. We always pointed honor and submission in one direction. Mm-hmm. But if it's a picture of the church, then God... Honor, he honors his own bride. He does, but he also requires us to honor him, yeah. right? So, 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 so the, the 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 truth of the matter is, I agree with that. I can be honest because an acknowledgement of your issues is not saying that you want to change it. Right. You're just saying, hey, look, you're gonna see this. And I'm going to let you know right now, this, your life going to be a living hell because I ain't trying to change nothing. And it's not an excuse. Right. Because you say it in advance. Now you can't say anything if yeah. you see this. No, yeah. I can say something and yeah. I will say something yeah. because it's not an excuse to stay the way you are. Yeah. I just wanted to point that out because there's, there's, for single people who are looking to be in a relationship, looking to be married, you need to know up front. Okay, yes, you need to know that if this is the person that God said you're you're going to be with, they're going to everybody has potential to disappoint you, potential to sin, potential to do wrong things. But those are conversations that need to be had because before the submission, because a person who won't submit themselves to God is not going to submit to you according to the scripture either. Absolutely. And so then um, that's where the battles come in to relationship. Absolutely. And so your children. And in your home, first of all, let me start off. Because most time when we get married, it's just that husband and wife. In in most cases, in a lot of cases. Not always. When we got married, it was a, we already had a child. She had already had a baby. And uh, so we got married. We never knew life with each other. This is the first time in our whole marriage that in the last three years, four years, that we've ever just been alone. So we're getting to know each other in a fresh and a new way in our marriage that we have never had the opportunity 
to have because we got married with a, a very small child. And so we got good at being parents. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes I think that was the glue that kind of kept us because we both wanted to, to be parents and we both wanted to be married, married, but sometimes we spent more time focusing on being parents than we focused on being married. Anybody else guilty of that? Uh, anybody? <laughs> you see that now. But sometimes we are. We, 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 you ever heard people say we stay together for the kids? Some people right now only stand together for the kids. Right now. Because there's a whole nother spirit that hits your house when your kids exit. If your relationship ain't tight with your spouse, the truth is going to come out. And you ain't going to be able to hide it. I don't care how many years, all those 18 years with those kids, I don't care how many years you held on to that. Y'all just beautiful. Y'all taking pictures, Christmas pajamas, everything. But as soon as those kids exit out your house, the truth is going to be exposed between you and your spouse. Yeah. And honestly, the truth has already been exposed to the child the entire time. Exactly. Because they don't miss anything. They don't miss in anything. That. Because that picture of the love that, that is supposed to be and the, the submission and all the things between the husband, and, we're supposed to teach that to the children by our example. Yep. If it's not there and we're living for the child, we're married for the child, they're going, they already see mm -hmm. what's missing. Yes. And so even the things that we think that we are hiding, you know, with the beautiful way that we present ourselves in, to, so, to society with social media and whatever else, the people who tell the real story oh, yeah, are the children. Are the children. And they, talk. they don't miss anything. And, and, they, and they may not say anything to you. Right. But they're going to tell somebody else. Half of y'all kids already done told on y'all. You just don't even know it. <laughs> I'm telling you, they done told their friend, Mama crazy. Come on, they don't text somebody like, I'm tired, there she, there she go again. Soon as you start talking in the house, they texting, they friend, there she go again. Man, I can't wait to get out of this house. Man, I can't wait to move out. Man, I can't wait to get my own money. And in a black family, this is what keeps our kids from going to get a proper education sometimes because they so quick to want to leave our house and make it on their own they know that a education going to take longer for them to get out. And so either they go to the dorm and then they, they fail college because they don't know what to do with freedom. Amen. Because all they're trying to do is escape from the stuff they experienced at home. So they go out there and they, they mess up their education all because they didn't leave and go to college for focusing on the education. They left to go to college to get away from you. Uh-oh. So what do I do when I still don't want to go home? I'm going to go get every job I can. And most of the boys, if anything, they either find a girl that they can stay with because they are stuck in extended adolescence. They don't really want to make a commitment, but they need somewhere to stay because they ain't trying to go home. And girls grow up faster. They have their own faster. Because, again, without a man teaching a man, they don't really know how to accrue things the right way. So they used to mama taking care of them or something like that. So they, they, just, they just wait. And so they try to find a girl. If a girl got an apartment, they go move in with the girl. And y'all girls got to stop that. Because after so long, he ain't never learned work ethic. He's sitting at home playing video games all day. Now you want to be mad at him, but you helped him. You helped him. I ain't got a problem with video games as a man. I got a problem with playing video games all day and broke. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do. I got a problem with it. I mean, how you get the money for a video game? Y'all can say all you want to. Y'all can say all you want to. Them things are expensive. If you can buy a, a, a video game, you can buy a bus ticket 
to go get a job. Uber, something. Right? So, so I'm saying, don't help nobody out to destroy your life for instant gratification for something you know you ain't going to want in the long run. I'm, I, feel the, I feel the spirit of God saying this. You got to stop dating for now. This is what's wrong with a lot of homes right now. They married they now man, but not they future. They married that moment, not their destiny. So when you get ready to grow, they not ready to expand with you. They not ready to expand with you. They still want to play while you trying to take life seriously. And vice versa. That ain't all just men. There's some women out there too. Just as bad. Just as bad. So, so, so please, whatever you do, don't, don't start your family off wrong by marrying somebody that you just got hooked on in this moment and in this season. What is God showing you in the future? When God gave me this woman right here, he told me, he said, this is your wife. You can either keep, you can marry your wife or you can keep chasing women. He said, what he told me was, every effort, if I ignore his call to marry her, every other effort that I went after any woman that I would choose will be futile and I will be up and down, up and down, up and down the rest of my life because I missed my moment with what God called me to marry. Because God knew where he was taking us. This woman didn't even know ministry, and she has been strong in ministry ever since she's been with me. And we have been to hell and back. And she never gave up. Never gave up. Always pushing me to keep going, even at my worst. Always. When I, when I, when I make mistakes, she always tell me, that's not who you are, though. You need somebody to see you for who God says you are. Y'all ain't talking to me today. When you to see some of y'all arguing about the mistakes and y'all doing all this in front of your children, and I'm telling you right now, your children learning from you. They learn all that craziness y'all talking. You need to be able to see beyond that. Per I'm not saying uh, ignore it. I'm not saying ignore the mistake. Deal with it. But don't sit there and yell and act a fool in front of your children. Put God in the center of that situation and still believe what God told you about that person. Don't let their mistakes and their weaknesses cause you to think something different about your spouse because your children will think that same thing. Because what happens is you make the children choose whose side they're going to be on. And some of y'all got the audacity to tell the child whose side to be on. Favor me, your daddy ain't miss. He ain't nothing. You know you a daddy girl, don't you? Your mama is crazy. But, but you say you a Christian home. You a Christian home. How can you be a Christian home when you're not living a life of submission to each other. And then your children are learning the dysfunction from you. And you're teaching your son, you can get married, but treat your wife this way. Talk to her this way. Mm -hmm. Then you have kids. You can talk to your kids this way. Yeah. Right? At some point, you got to want something different. Right. Amen. Amen. You got to want something different. Anybody here want something different? One of the things that I said to my wife when we got married, and I say this all the time, that, and I, I've said it in the marriage message and stuff, but this is a good time to talk about it right here again, and that is don't talk to me in a certain way. That I don't want you to talk to me, and I'm not going to talk to you in a certain way. That I don't want you to talk, talk to me. Uh, or, 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 that I don't, you don't want me to talk to you. And so here's the thing. Even in that, at 28, I understood that a woman will reciprocate what you give her, but also a man will reciprocate what you give him, all right? So, so, so you can't get mad when you getting back what you giving out. 
Y'all getting quiet and quiet. Yes, I agree. However, uh oh, <laughs> uh oh, I just got to bring it back to the word, right? Bring it back to the word. That's what we're talking about. Because if you have that the type of um, love and submission and relationship in a marriage, then you won't necessarily get back what that person gives to you because that means something's wrong with your submission in that right. moment. That's good. And because it's not, again, a, a, a tit for tat, like, okay, well, I get to sideline this because you're, you know, acting unseemly or whatever. Right. But that's also why it says um, wives be subject to your own husbands. Husband, yeah. Somewhere in this society in America and, and, and really in, uh, in other places too, we have this idea that the scripture says for women to be subject to men, and that's not what the Bible says. Right. I'm not, Tony can't tell me what to do. Right. <laughs> because that's not my husband, right? right? I don't have to subordinate myself to him. If it's a man on, on my job that's not my boss, he can't tell me what to do. And if I'm his boss, he has to do what I said to do because that's the position that I'm in. But somewhere along the way, we lost that and we started submitting in relationships to people who are not our husbands and then, or who are not our wives. And then we, we, get, we get the picture mixed up because then when, when we're looking for them to give us back or give us what the Bible says that they're supposed to give us, well, they don't have to give us that because that's not your husband. You right. should never have been submitting right. to him as though he was right. because it says wow. wives. I'm not a wife if you're my, my boyfriend or my oh come on my, my sneaky lady. There you uh, go. Say not, that again. You, you're, I don't have to do what you say. I don't have. And there's this swollen up in the chest that men get about just because you're sleeping with me don't mean you can tell me what to do. Yeah. That's your bad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you want to marry somebody and be the husband that, that God called you to be, if you want the wife that God called, there's no... We're not doing this the Bible way and not the Bible way at the, at same, the same time. time. Yeah. You want the Bible way. Wow. But you don't want to live the Bible <laughs> way. So, it's wives submit to your own husbands not somebody else's husband and not some because if he's he's not yours he's somebody else's even though he's not married yet because he's supposed to be on reserve for whoever is, his wife is yeah. so either way if he's not yours whether he's married or not he's somebody else's husband so, My God. so stop submitting things to him your body your your mind your time your effort stop serving yeah. Somebody that's not your husband. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not cooking no meals for you. I'm not <laughs> unless I just want to. Not because it's a demand, right? I'm not. I'm not. I don't have to give you gifts on your birthday. I don't have to yeah. come rescue you because yeah. you can't pay your rent. You're a grown man, and you're not my man. So, let, if we don't do the Bible way, we won't expect the Bible things. We gotta. My we gotta God. keep it to what the Bible says. My Lord. And we're going to make the altar call right there. <laughs> In other words, what I heard was stop giving boyfriends husband privileges. Amen. Yes. That's what I heard. And vice versa. And vice versa. Stop yeah. giving girlfriends because, wife privileges. Because women sometimes want men to shower them with all of the things of a husband and cover them like a husband. Yeah. And it, that's not your husband. You can't expect that from him. Yeah. Go get your own money and buy your own bag. Yeah. And buy your own shoes. Preach. And he don't, he don't have to do that. He don't have to pay your rent either. No. Nope. Because that's not your husband. That's not your husband. He's not your <laughs> husband, and he don't. Even if it's your baby daddy. Yep. That he don't have to pay he your rent. To. You got to have somewhere to live, whether he's with you or not. So you pay your own rent. Now, now he need to take care of that baby. Yep. Take care Gotta of that. that. <laughs> but he don't have to take care of you. Right. He don't have to pay for your wig. Yep. And, and he don't have to do that. <laughs> y'all, all we doing is putting y'all in our living room. I promise you. This is how we, 
This is how we do it at the house. This is how, this is how Tony over there. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> but but this, this kind of, we see, 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 here's the thing. And, I, and I've been really stirred up in the Holy Spirit about this all the time. But everybody claim they want discipleship until it's time for discipleship. Everything we're telling y'all today is discipling your household. Everything. We're talking about your marriage. We're talking, to, we're talking to singles who are dating people, who are placing requirements on men or women who have not received a covenant relationship under God's authority. You telling somebody what they got to do for you and threatening them with the life expectancy of the relationship based on how they treat you now, what they buy for you now, what they pay for you now. Amen. When really, you should be doing the dating to investigate more character. Because sometimes... Maybe y'all haven't heard about it, but a lot of people with money control you with money. They got it, but they'll control you with it, and sometimes they will physically fight you over it. I got a man that make a billion dollars a year, but he will punch your eyes out. What good is a billion dollars when all you paying for is doctor bills? Driving your Mercedes, driving your Lamborghini, driving your Bentley to emergency rooms every week. You in your house and you can't even see the walls because your eyes been beat shut. You ought to be investigating character. You ought to be trying to see if they on a spiritual growth journey. I'm talking to believers. I ain't talking to worldly folks. I'm talking to believers. Are they on a spiritual growth journey? Do they want Jesus? It got quiet right there. Let me ask you again. Do they want Jesus? That's very important. My, my daughter has seen my wife and I worship Cry, pray together. We've done it as a family to the point where she grew up and we've learned to talk, have hard conversations. Matter of fact, my daughter, I opened up to my daughter one day and she, she called me and she was asking me about dating and I was proud because she don't usually ask me about stuff like that because she know I'm going to tell her no just because she's talking about a dude. I don't want to hear it. No, you go get, go over there and get your education. We leave them boys alone. But I talk to her because I can't control it. So I'd rather get on the level she's on than to keep driving her away from something that she clearly, God gave her desire to desire. So instead of shooting your kids' dreams down, you ought to be trying to participate in their process. And to help sanctify this moment. So I, I, she, we was on the phone and we were FaceTiming and, and we were just talking. And, 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 I, and my question was, why do you want them? What do you see in them? Not now. Where are you going? You know what degree you're going to get. You already told me it's a couple of hundred thousand a year when you get it. What is it about this dude that you think you want to be with and end up taking care of. What does he see in you that he wants to take advantage of? How often has he touched you lately? Is he real hands-on? I'm a dude. So I talk to her like I'm that dude. Is he hands-on? Because if he's really hands-on, I can tell you right now what he's after. Well, this, 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 and this. And she convinced me and just told me everything. She poured her heart out to me, and I respected that. And I tried to see it her way. And, 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 and I, I told her, I said, I just don't want your destiny 
to be messed up in a moment. I can't stop nothing. I can't control nothing. But as your father and the way I have trained you, I, and I got choked up, Dr. Geneva. And, you know, me and my daughter, my wife will tell you, when it comes down to me and her, one thing me and my daughter hate to do for each other is see each other cry. We ain't finna cry in front of each other. Whether we mad at each other or whether we feeling, you know, sensitive to what, we ain't finna cry in front of each other. We got too much pride. Now, we'll cry. Both of us will cry in front of her. <laughs> but we all, <laughs> both of us, you know. But with each other, me and my daughter, we tough. I'm, we, I'm not crying in front of you. But that day, God said, let her see your pain. Let her see your concern. Don't just let her hear your words. Let her feel and see your heart. That you're not trying to control her. You're not trying to ruin her life. You're not trying to stop anything. You are just concerned about her future. And that who she hooks up with now could either delay or completely stop the success she's already made. And she's made some tremendous steps. And I just don't want her to mess that up. Because there's some people in this room right now, you were on your way until you fell into that pit stop. Call infatuation that you call love. Because sex confuses, preach Pastor B. Y'all don't want to hear this, do you? I'm about to stand up, but I don't need to because my wife's sitting down. <laughs> She's Sex confuses dating. And in your mind, make somebody permanent who's really temporary. Sex will make you make a decision because it feels so good and it's so available and it'll make you feel married and connected. That's why it's called a stronghold. A stronghold is something that not only gets to your body, it gets to your mind. And makes and it forms a belief system, preach Pastor B. And that belief system sets you up for failure. And it'll make you make a permanent decision on the individual that sometimes Clearly crazy emotionally. But you think marriage going to fix them. Not only will marriage not fix them, it will break you more. Because why? You went into the situation seeing all the flags and still just said, you know what? I really believe that if we make this permanent, things will change. And it never changed. Sex will put something on your mind that your body cannot handle for years on end. And you will regret it. So when I talked to my daughter, I mean, I literally began to cry. And I wasn't crying over you dating. I said, baby, I can't do nothing but let you make this decision. I got it. That's what fathers do. My wife, she let me have the situation. And I, I thought I was being set up because I thought she didn't want to answer the question. Because you and Kiana comes to her with these questions. But she came to me and my wife said, this is a season. She's trying to trust you with something that's sensitive to her. And I was sensitive to the Holy Spirit because she didn't even tell me, you know, what was going on. She just let, let it happen. She heard the conversation that we was having. She stayed, watch this, women. She stayed out of it. For all you mamas who think your husband ain't smart enough to deal with your children, she stayed out of it. Why? Because she understood the power of a father. She didn't have that in her life, so she wasn't going to interfere with my relationship with a daughter that came out of her body. 
She's not my seed, but I've been, I've, been, I've been maintaining that seed and taking care of that little girl her whole life. So sometimes, mother, you got to get out the way. If you ain't married and you got a good baby's daddy, get out the way. Let that man, come on somebody, teach your child how to, be act, how to act and how to think. Let that man pray for that child. That's what I've done for my daughter my whole life. Because again, this is, this is Ephesians chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 6. It talks about husbands, wives, talking about fathers and mothers. Then chapter 6 talks about children and their responsibilities in the home, their part to play. But it's our job to set them up for that kind of success. Are y'all hearing me today? We're almost done, but I'm telling you right now, at the end of the day, that conversation blessed me because for the first time in all of our lives, I opened up to my daughter with tears because I realized I'm on a different page with her now. She don't just need to see my words. She need to understand my passion and my love for her as a father. I'm with you, baby. I'm on your side. I'm on your team. I, I will stand with you through, you know, hurt, harm, and danger. I will stand through you with you, you know, in the fire. But, baby, I don't want it to have to be a fire if it's not necessary. It shouldn't always have to be a fire for us to respond. You don't have to be always a fire department parent. Y'all get that? You don't always have to have a water hose if you can. Pre what does what smoking the bear teach us? Prevent forest fires. <laughs> Come on. Y'all remember, remember smoking? Do they still have smoking in the school? They do? Oh, well, I, I, I ain't hearing no kids talk about smoking. Smoking was our hero. We used to go around with the Smokey bookmarks that was free. Every time Smokey came to the school, <laughs> I will not participate in sports fires. That's the way some of our house is. Something always on fire. Why? Because there's no preventing it, maintenance going on. There are no preventive conversations taking place. Baby, and let me tell you something. The average young person in a black home, because sex is so prominent in our, in our culture, that the average child get hooked. I got hooked on masturbation at seven years old because of who I was around. It wasn't in my home. It was in a guy that was going to sing with me and my dad. Y'all don't want to hear this, do you? In church? I, I wasn't in the club. I didn't smoke or drink. None of that. But one day my dad went into the house. We were on our way out of the out of, out of in the Louisiana, I believe. And the young man put his private part out. And he began to masturbate. And that was my exposure. Took me years to develop that habit. But that seed was sown that day. What have your children been, and watch this. This was before cell phones. I was 12. I was seven when I saw it. But this was before cell phones. Now, if you don't have parental guidance or parental control over your child's phone, because we think they just got to have them. Mm -hmm. Then what do they have access to? And what are they excess? That's why they so mad when you come in your lay room. Ooh. Go clean up. They get mad at you. Because they busy idolizing what's on their phone. Ooh, wait. And I, I listen, 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 y'all. I, I, I know without a shadow of a doubt that you want to believe your child ain't doing nothing. 
I know you want to believe your child is just quoting scriptures every time they come to the kitchen. <laughs> Mama, guess what I just learned? I was in there reading my scriptures. And I mean, the Lord just spoke to me. No. What you did was, now you're feeling convicted. Now you want to talk about Jesus because you're scared. <laughs> Preach, Pastor B. And we think, man, our child talking about God. Yeah. But before they start talking to you, they were communicating with other people. I've even caught my, my daughter uh, when she was in high school. They was in a group chat with some people, and a, and a little boy sent his penis on the phone. They just been friends. Everybody talking, giggling. All of a sudden, some boy said, oh, I got everybody's attention. <laughs> Boom. Oh, y'all think we just up here talking today, don't you? But if we don't disciple these moments right now, we're going to lose our families to the devil while we at church. That's exactly what the devil wants to happen. For us to lose our families and never miss a Sunday. Sitting in Sunday school, losing our families. Sitting in the sanctuary, losing our families. Don't know what our kids really are thinking. And that ain't talking about the married folk who think that they have to bring pornography into their marriage to have intimacy. Oh, my God. That's a whole nother level right there. Now you want your wife or your husband to perform what you sin. Pornography loses intimacy. Nothing can satisfy. I don't even know why I just went here. Nothing can satisfy you. Because pornography satisfies you. You satisfy you. Amen. That mind, that dopamine that your mind get high off of, and I, you, I know I hear y'all. I hear you. I just heard somebody right there saying, but it's normal, Pastor. Okay. The desire is normal. But the pornography that you're watching is perverted. That's not normal. You keep watching that and you keep responding to that. And before you know it, excuse me, sisters and brothers, you will be trying to try all kinds of sex. Stuff you said you would never do. You will be experimenting with stuff that you sin because you're being introduced to it all the time. Amen. Again, creating that belief system, leaving God's standards, leaving God's word to do your own thing. You married, you should not be interested in a threesome. I know y'all like, man, my kids, I should have left them at home today. No, your kids probably need to hear this. Because back in the day when we was growing up, go ahead and send the kids out. They ain't got no access to it. Today, they already know about it. My daughter taught me that. My daughter taught me that. So, so, so I ain't really scared to say too much in front of your children. Because I just put a name to it. Because they friends put names to it. And they already thinking it. Preach, Pastor B. Come on, and, 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 they, and, they, and they think that they're not good enough until they meet a certain worldly standard of appearance and behavior. Because the word of God is not good enough for them. People's opinion is the only thing that matters to them. Amen. And that's pressure. You have no idea, all of these babies, you have no idea how much pressure they're under to perform. This is why we got to have biblical families. This is why this summer, if y'all participate, once we get this side over here, I want to do Bible study on Wednesday night like never before. But I need a commitment from y'all that y'all going to show up. Why? Because if we produce the program and you produce the missing, how, how successful are we going to be? 
I literally want to bring in the adults in one room, emerged student ministry in another room, the children in another room, all in one night. And have a barbecue, uh, uh, a grill out there where we barbecue, basketball go while we, we shoot. And we have a whole night, every Wednesday night, of food, fun, fellowship, and discipleship for the whole family. Y'all, y'all hearing me? But if we don't commit ourselves, if we keep finding other things to do, I'm, you know what I'm trying to do? I'm t- right now, this announcement that I'm making to you, this vision that's burning inside of me right now, I'm trying to prepare you to decide to choose discipleship on Wednesday night above a ball game. Yeah. Pastor, you trying to say oh, you don't want my kids to play? No, I want them to play. If they have a game on Wednesday, that's fine. But I'm trying to get you to commit to something better right now because there is something so big that's happening in our world. If we don't get our kids and cause them to appreciate what our parents forced us to do, come on, somebody, you can say what you want to do. There is something to this forcing thing that our parents did for us. We learned how to be faithful to God's house. We learned how to be, and some of us got tired of being in God's house, and unfortunately, we trained our kids to do something different than what our parents taught us to do because we don't want our kids to grow up like we did and we're giving our kids everything else that they don't need and we ain't giving them nothing that they do need. Y'all ain't going to say nothing but I'm talking. It ain't popular. It's old school but it is needed. What good is they on a court and they going to hell? And you a child of God. What good is it that they can't quote one scripture, can't live one scripture because they are disinterested, disconnected, and disassociated from the house of God, from the word of God, but they famous on on the court. We don't even know their name in church, but everybody knows their name on the court. What are we going to do to change that? Used to be a time where the school even respected Wednesday nights and wouldn't put anything on Wednesday nights because they associated Wednesday nights with family. Y'all missed that. Not just with church, because families went to church on Wednesday night. The school wouldn't even put nothing on Wednesday night because they knew parents wouldn't participate. Now, since parents are agreeing more to missing church and participating in school, now we can't get kids or parents on Wednesday nights. Preach, Pastor B. If you don't see what the devil is doing, then to me, in my opinion, you may not care or you, it don't matter to you. But at the end of the day, this is what the devil is doing. He's got us busy. Busy. That we can't focus on our marriages. So we really just in the house and we got transactional marriages where you making your money, you bring your money to the table, I bring my money to the table. As long as we got these bills paid, we got peace. That's all you want? That's all you want? When the last time you prayed with your spouse? When the last time you gave your spouse a word from the Lord? This woman right here, everything she's doing, she can tell you right now, everything she's doing, God gave me a word first. I can't do none of the stuff she do. I can't can't perform. I can't can't serve the purpose that she served. None of that. But because I'm a man of God in her life, I always talk to her first from the voice of God, and I prophesy to her before she ever stepped into it. Never step into it. That's the kind of man you need. A a wife. My wife speaks into me prophetically and tells me the next level of our life is hinged on you. That's a responsibility. She's saying, I don't care what I'm making. She said, you're going to retire me. So I'm preparing to retire her so she can do full-time ministry. 
she know my worth, even though right now I'm not bringing in the kind of cash that she brings in. But she know what I'm preparing for is the next level, so I can I can bring in my cash and she can walk with me. Yeah. See, your marriage should have a vision and a purpose so strong that you understand the season that both of y'all are in. Come on, your children should be committed. My daughter told me one day, "You ought to stop looking for jobs." Trying to make people feel like that you are a man that take care of a you ain't got to prove nothing to people. She said you gonna mess everything up trying to do things your way. My daughter told me that. You know why she understands the call on my life. That's when you put your family in the hands of God. That's when you you you're subject to God and subject to one another, and you and you you teach your children how to honor God. God's will, God's plan for your life. Stop trying to satisfy these kids. Y'all ain't finna satisfy these kids. I don't want them to be mad. Um, honey, you, I don't, you ain't got to go to church today. All you teaching them is how not to be faithful. One day they're going to be on their own. And one day they're going to have to get up on their own, preach pastor B, and go to church. Stop letting these kids poke their lips out of their church. What, the, what? 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 We were never able to even get by with that when we was coming up. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying right now. If anybody had a mama like mine or a daddy like mine did not play with your attitude in church. You were going to respect God's house. Are you mad because you here? Let's go to this bathroom. I bet you when you come out of there, you're going to smile. Preach, Pastor B. Anybody got a mama like me, just say amen. amen. Anybody got a dad like me, say amen. amen. That's reality. It wasn't the fact we're trying to beat you into this. We're trying to show you you need to honor God's house. You need to honor God's presence. I'm trying to teach you to worship. So now you can't sit back and be on your, well, today, you can't be back on your cell phone. I was a kid, and my best friend was named Chuck, and we weren't even messing with nobody. All we do was playing cars in the back of the church. We were rolling cars on the pew. We wasn't moving hard or nothing. We were just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. My daddy stopped in the middle of his sermon and called my name from the back of the church to the front. Brian! Yes, Lord. Come on. Because they did two things in them parents back today, the they did two things in one. They worship and they train their kids at the same time. And they didn't wait to get home. Uh oh. Some of y'all want to wait to get home to execute. Baby, by the time you get home, you don't you don't got tired. You don't took them to the ball game and you got proud of them. Come on. You done went to the recital. Now you just, that's my baby. You done forgot. They done act the whole fool on you at church. You ain't been to punish somebody you proud of. I'm not training you today, baby. Come on, you want some, you want some cheesecake? Uh, you, you, come on. We want to reward them. And many of our kids get rewarded for bad behavior. And the more they do it, the more they get used to it. And they make you feel good, guilty, the moment you put your foot down. But when I was coming up, they got us right there. They made, I'm telling you, it's something to it. You can say what you want to. They made us respect God's house. Not only this, watch this. For some of y'all who let your children talk to grown-ups any kind of way, they made, you couldn't, my mama used to say, put a handle on it. Anybody know what a handle means? Somebody said no. Put a handle on it is that you don't get to walk up and just call Geneva, Geneva. Hey, Geneva. And you 12? You couldn't even do that at 16. Hey, Geneva, I, 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 look, I ain't going to lie. I hate to say that. Some of y'all kids done called some grown-ups by their first name. 
Some of y'all kids have. And I was shocked when they got by with it because I thought they were going to start bleeding. But you ain't do nothing. And so from this day to now, they grown. They've been calling grown-ups by their first name. But when we did it, that was a capital offense. That was a whole skillet waiting on your head. Now, I mean, it was real. You get a backhand slap calling somebody by their first name. But we don't even teach our kids to say Mr. and Mrs. anymore. What a young man coming up to me talking about some bro for. You 12. I ain't your brother. <laughs> Used to be Mr. Pastor Handles. Now everybody first name basis like we buddies. You can't detail the distinction from a child to an adult. Children able to talk to you like they grown. Getting in grown people's business. Y'all got to say, I'm telling y'all, I'm trying, listen, I'm trying to help us because the Lord is interested in our homes. He is. This, listen, your kids can't have something you ain't got. If the parents don't have respect for other people, then your kids can't have respect for other people. If the parents don't have respect for God, then your kids can't have respect for God. If the parents don't have respect for prayer, then your kids won't have respect for prayer. Y'all getting the connection? If the parents don't have respect for Bible study, then your children will reject Bible study. If, your if the parents don't have respect, glory to God, for worship, then your kids will act like nothing is going on in the sanctuary. They're not going to do the right thing automatically. They have to be trained. Isn't that what the Bible says? I hope we say it. Do you have anything else, Dr. Kim? <laughs> Just this one thing. Um, I'm going to give this first to Nika. And um, <laughs> I'll just mess with you. Um, the Bible says for children to obey their parents. It does not say for wives to obey their husbands. So all of y'all that said those vows, that's on you, the love, honor, and obey, because I didn't say that when I got married. So <laughs> if you're not married yet, don't, don't let them make you say that, because you don't have to say that, unless that's what you just want to do, because the Bible does not say for wives to obey their husbands. It says for children to obey their parents. You are not my daddy. <laughs> well, why you call me daddy, then? I knew you were going to say that. I knew you was going to say that. <laughs> you my baby daddy. Y'all hear that? You not my daddy. That's all I hear. Tell Vic I tried today. Tell him I tried. I ain't got no dance, but I tried. <laughs> At the end of the day, the Bible doesn't say that, but the Bible does teach that. Why does the, how does the Bible teach that? Watch this. You only not to obey me if I'm telling you to do something against the word of God. Don't, 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 don't he try it. Because you already know. You said you were trying to get them out of here. I already did the study. Oh, okay. Y'all got permission to miss me tonight, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm trying to help you, though, honestly. Uh, she probably going to lean in on the submission part more than the obey part. But the, what is submission? Oh, submission is obedience. 
So that means that when you tell me to take out the trash, I shouldn't do it. <laughs> the submission that it talks about for the husband and the wife in Ephesians 5 is all voluntary and it's willful, right? Yeah. Nobody forced Christ to the cross. Right. Not even God. He agreed with God to do. So if whatever we're doing is, is, is willful. Right. Yeah. I'm not. Our children have to do the things that we say, whether they want to or not. But then we also, the Bible teaches on the other side of that for parents to have a submission to their children as well. But the submission and obedience are two different things. Okay. But we can study it out and we can bring it back. She's trying to be technical, y'all. No, I'm not. I'm trying to be biblical. <laughs> it's going to be a long ride back to Memphis. <laughs> I think I'm going to go to sleep. I, I, I'm going to stay up. Uh, it's going to be a rough evening in Harris house. Rough evening. Y'all pray for us. Pray for, pray for our joy in the Lord. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> y'all hear about somebody in Memphis. The car blew up. <laughs> Listen, did y'all get anything out of this? This came up because of y'all. This came up because of your questions, your, you know, comments and all this. So I said, there is no way that, you know, I can just overlook all of this stuff that's coming up out of this. And so, as you can see, I love my wife very much. She loved me very much. But... Again, today you got a full picture of what it looked like. I have my perspective. And nine times out of ten, we're in agreement. But the way we say it, what we bring to the table is different. Most people will fall all the way out over perspective. When sometimes you're really saying what the other person did not say. It's not that they're in a disagreement with you. You're just saying what the other person did not say. A lot of marriages fall out just because the person won't repeat what the person said. But I have learned to respect that she just says the other part. And watch this. Not only that, she has a right to a different perspective than myself. Because she, I don't want no woman to be me. I want her to be her. That's how I enjoy her. And that's, that's, that's how we operate. So, so again, man, I want you guys to have successful families. I want you to have, and do the work. It's work in it. It's work in it. And it ain't easy. Because you can do your job. You don't get to decide how people are going to respond. You can't. But you're, if you're building a house that's on a solid rock called Jesus, you can be ready for warfare. But you got to understand that whatever battle this leads you into, God has already gotten you to victory. It wasn't always easy in our home, raising our child. But we kept at it regardless because we knew one day, and I kept telling my daughter, I ain't trying to be your friend. Not right now. I can't be your friend. I know you ain't going to like me. You probably going to hate me for a minute. But now... The reward is she comes back and she tell me, Daddy, I be on the campus and I be hearing you talk to me in my head. Stuff be going on and I just hear my daddy voice in my head, Daddy, and she don't say Daddy, D-A-D-D-Y, -D -D she say Diddy, D-E-D-D-Y, not, not the Diddy in the news, <laughs> Diddy, D-E-D-D-Y. And, and so she said, Daddy, she said, Daddy, I be, I be, I be listening to you in my head. You be talking to me. You be helping me make the hard decisions. I hear you. Tell me the tough stuff in my head so I make good decisions because your voice don't ever leave me. Don't she? She said that all the time. Even when, when I contact her sometimes, she tell my wife, she said, Daddy just give me random encouragement, random wisdom from time to time, and it plays in my head. Just random. Because I pray for my kids. Just because your kid's not in your house, that don't mean you stop being a parent. You parent them differently. You pray for them and cover them. Listen, I'm telling you, 
I don't want my child's belief system to change because she don't understand her for her Jesus. And on these school campuses, y'all going to find out really soon. It's, it's, it's broadening because I'm telling you, everybody got rights, right? The government giving everybody rights. Guess what else they giving? They giving Satan's, Satan's army a right to pray when Christians won't. Yeah, they giving Satanists an opportunity to come on elementary campuses and begin to pray. They got after satanic after school programs. Right now in Memphis, Tennessee, they have satanic after school programs right now. If we don't get it together in our homes and cause our children and our families, our husbands, our wives and mothers and fathers to stand up for Jesus Christ, your children will not stand a chance and maintaining their faith and continuing a legacy of faith in their generation and in your family. I know you don't want faith to fail on the backs of your children. I know you don't. I know you don't. So you're going to have to do some work. It may not be easy. What you don't know, you may have to find some answers. You may have to read some books. You may have to read some scriptures. You may have to pray real hard. One thing I know as a parent, one thing I know as a husband, is that when you talk to God and we consult his word, he don't ever leave you ignorant. He always give you wisdom. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless y'all. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for this opportunity to sit and just have a conversation. It still is the word. We address Ephesians chapter 5 and chapter 6 because you are addressing the kingdom family. You are trying to bring us back to you because if the family don't get right with God then the church loses its value and loses those who are in the army of the Lord because we are handing over our children to the devil because we want invest in them the things that they need to be better believers in Christ Jesus. So Lord, I'm asking you that whatever we were speaking over the last month or so in this series and so far and what we have discussed today, I pray that you minister to every mother, every father, and every child. I pray nobody leaves here upset whether it be Parent, mother, uh, parents, or children, or husband, spouse, his husband and wife, or, 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 or daughter and son, whatever it may be, I pray that everybody will understand this one time that you're really just trying to bring God back to the home. You want to be the center of every marriage, every center, every single parent home the center of those who have lost their spouses. Lord, I thank you for every family. We call our children and our families back to God. We call our children and our families back to God. God, we invite you to our house. Come to, somebody ought to confess that right now. Lord, come to my house. Come on, say it again. Lord, come to my house. Come on, say, invade my home. Take out everything that's not like you and release your spirit in my home. Come on, give God praise for that right now. Release your spirit into every home. God, we can't change our families on our own, but through the power and the working of the Holy Ghost, every home shall be transformed by the power of the living God. Come on, if you believe that right now, you ought to give God your best praise that God is changing my home. He's changing my marriage. He's changing, come on, he's transforming us. We're going to be better. We're not giving up here. We're not going to let the devil tell us that we are, we are we've lost and that we are defeated. We are not. We are not defeated. And we're not going to settle for defeat. We're going to fight for our families. I said, we're going to fight for our families. My family is worth fighting for. 
Come on, come on. My family is worth fighting for. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You're here today and you need Jesus. Make him Lord of your life. Make him a savior of your life. Come on. Come on. You're online today. I'll tell y'all, God is moving both in the house and online. On Wednesday night, we got a new member from Massachusetts. Online member from Massachusetts. God's moving in this church. He's moving in this church. If you have left the Father, you have left the church, it's a good time for you to come home. It's a good time for you to say, Lord, I need to bring myself back to you. I need to come home. I've strayed. I've left you. I've left the faith. But you have never left me because if you had, I'd probably be dead by now. You've been watching over me even though I have strayed from you. Come back home to a faithful father who desires to have you. If you're in need of a church home and you're online this morning and you're in this building this morning, we would love to have you become a part of our family. Come on, let's give God praise. We don't never know. We don't ever know. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you today. We thank God for y'all. And I guess we can go home. Amen. We can go home. <laughs> Amen. Stand on your feet, everybody. I sure hope y'all were blessed by this. I do. I don't know if you know what kind of pastors you got, but you got some discipleship believing pastors that really trying to make a church out of an army for Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you and give you peace. Be blessed, everybody. All right. We love y'all.